Hey folks, John here, I'll take three forwards. Welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome. It's been a while since I've uploaded, so let me go ahead and fill you in on what's been going on and where I've been. My most recent video was me making stock for Blade Show, and uh, Blade Show, getting everything I needed made, really, really came down to the wire. Like, we left to drive down to Atlanta the day before Blade Show at 6 a.m., and I worked all the way up until 5 a.m., so about an hour before we left, and uh, filming just makes everything take longer, and I, I had planned to make more videos and do in production, but as time was ticking by and you know things were moving slower than I thought they were there just wasn't time to film and get everything done that I needed to get done so there's that the blade show was a great time I met a lot of really cool people reconnected with a lot of old friends we ended up selling pretty much everything we made between the sales we did there and the big overstock sale I had afterwards so uh all in all we did pretty good and if you've been to my Etsy you'll notice it's still shut down the reason for that is I'm in the process of buying a house uh, I was actually supposed to close this past week it's got a nice big shop space and everything. The business needs to expand. I've really gotten, I've gone as far as I can go in this little shop space. You know, it's been good to me, but it's time to take the next step. But because of some issues with the inspection, uh, the closing date ended up getting pushed back a month. And I'd already gone ahead and cleared all the work off the board and filled all the Etsy orders. I chose not to reopen it for the month because I would just have it open for two weeks and then have to close it again. So it's just, uh, it really just wasn't worth it. I might make a couple of batches of tools here and there to sell on my Instagram just to keep myself from starving or anything like that but the bright side is now uh for the first time in years i have an abundance of free time to work on videos and personal projects and whatnot so let's get started so what i got here to start is a billet of fossil damascus i made this a few videos back basically what i did was i took off cuts and scraps from all my recent damascus projects packed them in a can filled it full of powdered steel uh made a billet and this is what we got if you remember from that video if you've seen it by the end i was kind of underwhelmed with the pattern you know it's like bleh but uh, I think once it's forged to shape and ground flat and the bevels are ground and all that, I think it might kind of, there might be a little bit more going on with it. So let's find out. I think what I want to make is something along the lines of a Bowie knife. If you follow me on Instagram, which you all should be doing, by the way, link in the description. I made one just recently that I really, really liked. I really, really liked that style and that shape of blade. So that's something I want to go for. The forging process for the style of blade I want to make is pretty simple. Basically, you just set down the material for your tang and ricasso, isolate and draw out the tang form your point and then as you hammer out your bevel you uh, your point will kind of move back towards the center or the spine of the blade and I like it to end up just about in the center but like I said this is a style of blade I've just been really fond of lately so that's something that I think will look cool with this steel. Alrighty. first things first we need to isolate the material for the Picasso and the tank. Next step, isolate the material for the tank so I got my trusty guillotine tool ready to go. Right about there should do it.
Alrighty, we got our tang and Ricasso done. I like to do those first because then it just gives me a good easy spot to hold it to uh, forge the blade. So next we'll start working on the point. So after getting done with the forging on this guy, I just clamped it up in my vise between these two pieces of angle iron. That should give me a good straight piece to work with. It's still pretty thick. I probably could have got a little more size out of the blade if I'd have forged it thinner. But this way we still we have plenty of room to play with grinding it flat and everything. So we'll let that guy cool and we'll hit the grinder. So all I've really done off the anvil is go ahead and make sure the uh, ricasso and the flats are good and flat and everything's in line, as well as go ahead and rough it in the profile. It's important that your ricasso is good and flat, one, because that way I'm not going to have to go right through my touch mark, and two, when you put your file guide on, you want it to be good and flat so it grabs on there real good and stays where you put it. Biggest thing we need to worry about before heat treat is getting these shoulders squared away, so we'll do that now. Quick note. Whenever you're doing this, uh, just make sure your file guide is on there good and square. You know, nothing to it really. What I like to do is turn my grinder down to about half speed and kind of hog off the bulk of the material and then move the file guide actually up the blade about a sixteenth of an inch. And then what I'll do is come into that corner with a round file and uh, file down to the file guide. Reason for that is you want a radius corner in there. You don't want it to be a hard 90 because that can create a weak spot to break the blade. But we'll file in with the round file. Once that's done, we'll come in here with a flat file, square everything off, boom, good to go. There we go. Got the shoulders filed up real good, so we should have a good easy time getting a good clean guard fit up. So next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and heat treat the blade. Reason being is uh, I want the blade to be pretty much done to final dimensions before we make the guard because if we make it now and then uh, you know we sand the blade and smooth it out and polish it, it's going to be ever so slightly thinner and that can slop up the fit up. Also right now, the, uh, the spine and the edge are pretty close to the same thickness and the more of the disparity there is between the two, the more likely you are to have problems with warping and cracking. And I've only got one piece of this material so I want to maximize my chances of success. So we'll heat it up, uh, touch mark it, quench it, and temper it.
So what you saw me do there, I'm using Parks 50, which is a fast quenching oil. It gets the steel below hardening threshold in about seven seconds. I don't actually know what the scientific term for hardening threshold is. If anybody in the comments knows, tell me. But afterward, you got about 10 seconds while the blade is still pretty warm to fix any warps or anything like that. It can be kind of dicey if you're doing it by hand or at the anvil or anything like that. But for a blade this small, what I usually like to do is uh, I have a couple pieces of angle iron clamped up in the vise. While the blade is still warm, I'll just throw it in there, let it cool the rest of the way. And, you know, that usually gives me pretty straight blades. First step in grinding out the blade is to get our flats nice and clean. So what I've done is go 36, 120, and then an A45 Trizac, which is, I think, similar to 320, if I'm not mistaken. But all that does, you know, make sure the knife is good and flat, good and straight. The Trizac belts are really great for getting the deep gouges from the lower grits out. So when it comes time to hand sand this, we should be sitting pretty. So next step, strike in our bevels, get them cut in real good, clean up the lines, put the uh, swedge on the back. And then we'll dress up the profile of the tang, make sure it's tapered, and we'll be good to fit a guard. Alrighty, so the blade is ground out uh, basically to its final dimensions. Lines aren't perfect, but that'll all fix itself as we hand sand it and everything. We got the tang good and tapered. So the next step is to make the guard. What I got here to do that is a uh, scrap piece of 320 layer Damascus. I'm basically just going to forge this out into a bar stock and cut out the shape I need and go from there. After the quench, this thing was tempered for two hours at 400, and I haven't checked the rock well since. Uh, but what we got here, 65 HRC file. And, you know, it's skating the crap out of that, so this guy definitely needs another temper cycle. I'm going to give it two more hours at 400 and see where we are. So I filmed pressing out that bar of Damascus into a bar stock, but I didn't realize I had the tripod resting against the press, and the uh, footage just looked terrible. But we ended up just flattening out into a bar stock. It's about a quarter inch thick, a little over an inch wide. There's plenty there to make the guard we need. We've also got the blade out of the second temper cycle. And now our 65 Rockwell file will cut just a little bit, but our 60, you know, it's still skating over it like glass, so this thing's still just a bit too hard, so we're going to give it another hour and a half at 400 or so. So to get started fitting up our guard, I've just kind of eyeballed the center and made a straight line, made some center punch marks. We're going to go through and drill those out and then go in there with needle files and get everything smoothed up until it fits real good. You might wonder why I'm not hot fitting this like you've seen me do before, and the reason is uh, this is Damascus, so it's going to need to be ground clean and smooth and all that for the pattern to really show. And whenever you hot punch or hot fit something like that, it kind of pulls the material directly next to the blade in, and you end up with kind of an ugly transition, which if you're doing a forged finish on your guard is completely fine, and you have the advantage of being able to recess the shoulders of the blade into the material, but because we're not going to be able to do that, this has to be drilled and filed. If you had a mill, this would be a great time to use it, but I don't, so here we go. So, moving right along, filing this uh, this guard slot out. The only real advice I could give you, I don't consider myself good at this or anything, but go slow and check often, because if you go too far and end up with a gap, there's not really much of a way to fix it. Uh, but I just got a little jar full of needle files over there. I got round files, flat files, square files, triangle files. This is one that I've modified, you know, I've grounded taper and ground the teeth off of one side so I can kind of get into the sides and make a nice flat surface there so but like i said just take your time go slow and check often and uh hopefully we'll have a good fit up so we're coming along with the guard fit up it's not perfect it's a lot better than my last one i'll say that but it's still not perfect but uh this is the only piece of this damascus i've got and i'm pressed for time so it's just gonna have to do so next step is actually going to be to shape it out and then bend it to shape and then uh that's when i'll actually go in and try to get the final fit up you see it's not all the way up yet because as we bend it into the S shape we want that might screw with our slot. So um, we'll get it shaped out, bent, refine the fit up and go from there.
So here we are after bending of the guard. It's on there nice and tight. Next step is to go ahead and go back anywhere with our needle files and get everything trued up until it butts up against the shoulders real nice. You know, still not perfect by any stretch. It's better than my last guard fit up by quite a bit, but guards are kind of a weak point for me. So I'm trying to take my time and really do a good job with this one. You know, not perfect, but we're getting better. So next step, because this guard is Damascus, it's going to need to be uh, sanded out through the grits, hand sanded, cleaned up and all that. So uh, it'll look nice in the edge. Same, we got to hand sand the blade. Both of these pieces will need to be completely finished and ready for the acid bath before we put the all thread on the end of the tang, because once it's on there, you're not going to be able to get the guard off. But there's that. Alrighty, we got our guard filed out the rest of the way. I've started to grind it up the grits a little bit just to kind of thin it down and taper the ends a little bit. Next thing I got to do is heat treat the guard. Reason being, because this is Damascus, we'll just get a better contrast if it's hardened and tempered and everything. Look how good it's on there. You know, even though it's not perfect, you know, it's, it's pretty solid. You know, it's a lot better than my last one. Like I said before, guards are kind of a weak point for me, but we're getting somewhere. So our guard has been quenched. It's in the oven tempering while that's going on. I'm going to get to work hand sanding out this blade, so it's just a clamp to a piece of 2x4. We're going to start at 80 grit and uh, okay, take it all the way up to 800. So that actually didn't take too terribly long at all. This is just one side and it's only up to 80 grit. But uh, the Trizac belts do a really good job of getting out the deep gouges from the heavier grits, you know. Normally that first grit off of the sander is the most painful and you're looking at an hour or two of hand sanding per side. That was only about, you know, 20, 25 minutes. But anyway, we'll hit the other side and then uh, we'll keep moving. So I decided to do just a quick and dirty test hatch at 80 grit to kind of get an idea of what this was going to look like. And that's actually pretty stinking cool. We got some high layer stuff going on towards the point, some lower layer stuff on other parts of the blade. I dropped it on the ground, so it's kind of dirty. But how cool is that? You know, especially with how kind of disappointed I was with how this looked when it was a bar stock. I'm really, really excited and I'm glad I'm seeing this project through. So the way we're going to be assembling the knife, we got our handle block. We're going to be drilling one long hole all the way through it. It's going to accommodate our threads, broach out the area where the tang is going to sit and then countersink from the back so that a brass pommel nut can be screwed on and tighten everything up and, you know, put the handle on there rock solid and everything. Last time I did this, I actually brazed the threads onto the end of the tang. But it made a huge mess and I feel like I kind of got lucky that it worked so well for the first time I did it. So given the fact that this is such an important piece, I've only got one piece of this material, uh, I'm just going to play it safe and weld it on there. Which isn't quite as strong as brazing, but it is plenty strong. If you watch my Forged in Fire episode, Season 6, Episode 17, this is actually how I assembled my knife handle going into Round 2. And that knife made it through a fire brick chop, so I think we'll be okay. Alrighty, we got that baby welded on there. Next thing I'm going to do real quick is just a little bit of a post heat. Reason being that uh, the rapid heating cool and cooling of the localized heat can make that joint a little bit brittle, especially when you're welding dissimilar materials like this. So uh, just heat it up to about a dull red, let it cool on its own, should relax the metals in there a little bit, hopefully make it a little stronger. Alrighty, got it cleaned up a little bit. Looks kind of like trash. But it's obviously not coming off, so we can keep moving. So I got my hole started with just a regular old quarter inch drill bit, and now I've switched to this extra long one. Reason for that is the hole being already established will just give this a little bit more stability with a long bit like this if you try to force it it'll uh, it can kind of bend and flex inside the hole and screw everything all up and uh, that ain't no good at all so just take your time go good and slow and you'll be okay
Alrighty, we got the slot for our tang broached out. It's sitting in there real good. We got our threads right there so we can uh, move on to the next step. Next step is to come in from the back end where our threads are gonna be with our bigger drill bit. I've gone ahead and figured up the depth and got it taped off. We're gonna stop right there. That'll give us a nice strong shoulder. We're gonna be making the pommel nut out of some 3 8 brass. So this is a 3 8 drill bit. And uh, that's all there is to it really. It's a bit hard to show you without shining a light down in there, but you can kind of see, maybe not, how we have that shoulder around the threads now. That's where our pommel nut is gonna sit and uh, mechanically secure our handle. You'll see in a minute. To gauge the depth of the hole, we need to drill and tap for our pommel pin correctly. All I've done is just drive it in as far as it'll go and then marked it. And then I've just marked off the drill bit we're gonna be using to drill and tap the hole, leaving a little bit of brass on the end so we don't go too deep. Alrighty, we got our hole drilled, just about ready to start cutting the threads. You see I've got two taps I'm going to be using here. Reason for that is with the taper on the end of this quarter inch by 20 tap, you kind of lose a lot of depth as far as how many threads you can cut. So I have a second quarter inch by 20 tap that I've uh, ground the taper off of. So we'll start it with this one. And once we have a few threads to grab a hold of, we'll switch out to this one. And that way we can cut threads all the way to the very back of that hole we just drilled. So, you know, we've just got the most room to play with. So now that I've got my thread started, I've got my other tap in here with the flat end. And we'll just keep going until we bottom that baby out. So now you kind of see what I've been getting at with this handle construction. I got these flats ground onto our pommel nut so we can stick it in the vise, put the blade on there, and then turn it until everything's all screwed together, rock solid. You know, there's zero play in the guard. Next up is to go ahead and shape out the handle on the sides and on these indexes and everything. You don't want to uh, mess with this until the knife is actually glued up and everything because once you grind this flush, you're not going to be able to take the knife apart again. But this way, you take it on and off and make sure your fed up looks good and everything. So. It's a lot of little steps and it might have been kind of hard to grasp what I've been trying to do this whole time, but now you see. Alrighty, got our handle roughed out. Uh, I didn't show you the whole process because it's a lot of taking it off and putting it on and taking it off and putting it on trying to get a good fit up and something that feels good in the hand but we got a good shape going so next step is to hand sand it uh and get it ready for assembly so our handle's shaping up i didn't show you the hand sanding because the video is getting kind of long and because i assume most of you know how to use sandpaper but a pretty cool trick i've been messing around with lately for finishing knife handles this is just plain old super glue and all you do is put you a little bit on there you kind of rub it in there all around. Coat the whole handle in it real good. The smell is pretty terrible. Then once it's set and dried for a few minutes, just take it to a loose cloth buffing wheel. A little bit of green compound. So just wanted to show you out here in the light. You see how we got that kind of nice soft satin sheen now? Almost like you just pulled it out of your oil. It'll stay like that now. It won't fade. So that uh, that's pretty cool. It also it makes it very smooth. It almost feels like glass in your hand. So that's pretty cool. This is a stabilized piece of wood. So it uh, doesn't really offer much benefit in the way of waterproofing. But if you use this on regular non-stabilized wood, it waterproofs it really, really well too. So... Just a cool little trick to know for uh, getting really nice finishes on your knife handles. Sand it to 320, super glue, buff. Alrighty, so now it's time to etch the blade in the bolster, or guard, not bolster, to bring out the pattern. So I got them both sitting in uh, my tube of ferric chloride here. Luckily, it's just narrow enough for the guard to fit in there, so we'll leave that for about 10 minutes. 
pull it out, polish it with some 2000 grit, and then probably do that one more time to get a really good deep contrast. And then we'll be ready to assemble this baby. All right, we got the epoxy in and the knife assembled. Let's uh, just let it sit for a bit. All righty, so here is what we got. Got some low layer stuff going on, some higher layer stuff, random hair, no worries. Some more high layer stuff. Really, really happy with the way the pattern came out. Wood came out really nice. Some nice Damascus for our guard. The bottom of the handle was finished in the same way as the rest. Uh, just ground everything flush, sanded it, super glued, buffed. Pretty cool. So there we go. One real nice fossil Damascus buoy. Really happy with the way it came out. I really like this method of uh, construction for hidden tangs. You know, it's good good and strong, makes everything fit together real, real tight and good. So there's that. I didn't sharpen it yet because I'm gonna make a sheath. I'll do a separate video making the sheath. Fair warning, I'm not much of a leather worker, so don't take it as a how-to. It's really just a more of a how I do it type thing. So uh, that'll be kind of cool to look forward to. But this guy here is a really significant piece of old Hickory Forge history. You know, it's got the scraps of so many different pattern welding projects in here, as well as, you know, kind of signifying the redemption of the spectacular failure of the first time I tried to make Fossil Damascus. If you remember that video, we actually destroyed the first billet we tried to make. So, uh, that's pretty sweet. Another reason is this is the last piece that will be coming out of this little workshop. Uh, I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm in the process of buying a house. The closing date is fast approaching. So, uh, pretty soon we'll be closing up shop and getting out of this little place. But that's all there is to it. If that's all I got for you. If you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Always more cool stuff coming. Links to all the social media in the description box below if you want to follow me. Instagram is where I'm the most active. Links to the Patreon if you want to help support the channel. All that good stuff. But uh, like I said, that's all I got for you. And uh, y'all take care.